Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and it's time for another one of Emma's vlogs, a uh, fan favorite here. So, as you guys noticed when you saw her sheet, we are slightly reducing training volume, particularly some of her lower body. She's struggling a little bit with recovery. So, to start off the week, we maxed against 30 pounds of band tension, and her primary supplemental press afterwards is a pen bench, right? doing a heavy pen bench and then her second one is of course incline dumbbells which you guys will notice on day two on the speed day we do not do the pen bench she just goes to the dumbbells now with some of my lifters depending upon where we are with their training and their total volume we only do one supplemental press right we only do one supplemental press we pick one that gets what they need and in her case coming up we might do that if if recovery dictates it and then we just put all of our focus into a single supplemental press and rotate it. Now you guys will notice also we are rotating movements. Her other pull-ups are out, chin-ups are out because she was stalling on them. She got up to I believe eight chin-ups and so now we're going over to a, a neutral grip. And the beauty of, of having things like a football bar or if you have a rack set up with, with multiple grips is what? We can rotate through those movements. So you guys will see me personally do up to three different grip widths on a neutral grip pull-up. Uh, and you know, in her case, we have chins, we have pull-ups, and we have at least a couple different grips we can do for the neutral grip. This lets us rotate movement patterns. This is how we avoid acclimation. This is how we avoid overuse. So you know, when people hear me talk about rotating movements, they're like, well, I don't have 15 different barbells. It's like, Okay, but you don't need 15 different barbells. It's nice if you do. I mean, that, that allows me to do four different types of seal rogues, right? But it's not necessary. Here she is. She's using her dumbbells. Instead of a pen blade row or a bent over row, we can go to a dumbbell row. We've done them one arm. And this is done as a, as a normal bent over row at 45 degrees. These are different movements. So when we talk about rotating movement patterns, that's what we mean. We change grips on a pull-up. On a row, we can do a pen lay row, we can do a bent over row, you can do a one-arm dumbbell row, you can do a two-arm dumbbell row, you can do a chest supported on an incline bench dumbbell rows. All right, these are movements we can do with just a barbell and dumbbells. They're all different exercises and they're all still a row. We could take those rows over to a snatch grip. Same thing here, we took out her dumbbell extensions and we're adding rope press downs. So a lot of her supplemental lifts you people can do at a commercial gym. All right, for her max effort lower, we did a max squat with the cambered bar. Now this bar is hard for her. Uh, she only got 205 and you guys notice it's tough. So I kind of laugh when people saw me do the really heavy cambered bar squat and some people are like oh well that doesn't count in it which is is laughable it's like you've never maxed on one of these bars anyone thinks that you're going to be 50 pounds stronger on a cambered bar than you are a straight bar you've never maxed on one as you just saw with her that was that was not easy she got 205 but they are much easier for good mornings. It's one of the things she noted we went over to good mornings with this bar and she's like, wow, this bar feels extremely natural. It's extremely natural for the good morning and it is. And again, every client I have who gets one of these bars, they all say the same thing. Like this bar feels like it was made to do good mornings with. And it, and it really does. Totally different movement. Uh, and she'll get strong pretty quick at these. So now we're doing a narrower stance. You got to notice before we were doing wide stance. And then I believe we came into it from her really wide stance. We went to a narrow stance with the safety bar. Now we're doing the narrow stance with the cambered bar. Why? Because her sumo deadlift has passed her conventional. She used to be stronger at conventional. Her sumo has now hit her PRs. Her conventional is 20 pounds weaker than her sumo so we need to get this narrower stance stuff and the narrow stance on a good morning works more hamstring and it works more low back a wider stance shifts to glutes and to hips right shifts to glutes and to hips and then we do more or less restoration work for her with really high reps on the reverse hyper i don't push her reverse hyper 
for heavy weight like some of my people we do really high reps it's just for restoration and some people might look at this and go is this enough to grow on all she did all she really did was you know a couple of exercises there yes absolutely enough to grow on uh, you know tr truth be told a lot of you out there more novice lifters I could do nothing but rotating max and speed work and have you just get really strong on good mornings and reverse hypers right or a hyper extension if you don't have a reverse hyper and I could probably get your squat really really high like what's the highest level of squat I've gotten someone to a training with that level maybe 500 pounds It's, it's not that hard to build a squat if you know what muscles to work and how to program the supplemental stuff and how to rotate the movements. It really isn't. Her speed bench went good though. Uh, speed bench we're just doing again bands. I think we stuck with the normal straight bar this week for her. And we may rotate through some of that again just to avoid some overuse. But we may not need to because I can do all her supplemental work with other bars. Right? We can rotate dumbbells just like we did here. We took our flat dumbbell press, we're taking it over to an incline. We had also done some, some flat incline work. Again, rotate the movements based upon the weak links that we see. Right? We rotate the movements. In her case, she needs a little more a little more delt at the moment. I want to make sure her delts are coming along, so we've done a little bit of incline work. But we'll go back to, to a heavier pec focus coming up here shortly. Right? Because we did quite a bit of pec work for over a month. I uh, want to make sure her delts are caught up, then I'll go back to a little more pure pec focus, which will again be stuff like pen presses. It will be pause presses, right? It'll be floor work, floor presses. And of course, I always like to put two back movements in. That's one of the things you'll generally notice with my clients. We do two different lat exercises, right? We do two lat exercises. In this case, it's pull ups and neutral grip pull-ups and dumbbell rows this week and then I let her have a little bit of tricep work in there but some of that tricep work if I go to bigger heavier tricep movements and pull that second press we may pull the tricep extensions out completely right we may pull them completely kind of like what you guys have watched watching me do a little more of right we can pull them out it's fine All right, we're taking her percentages down on speed work. I feel like I'd like a lot more bar speed. And so her percentages are going lower and I'll probably take them even lower than what I have them now. I mean, her speed work is good, but it could stand to be faster. And again, we talk about recovery, going really light on the speed work is phenomenal for your recovery. We get all the benefits of it, but it beats us up even less, right? So after you do speed work, you should feel restored. You should not be exhausted after speed work. It should be really hard while you're doing it, but you should feel restored. So this week we went with a safety bar with bands for her, for this phase, and then we're doing conventional against bands, right? And all of it's doubles at the moment for her. And then afterwards, what did we do? Pushing good mornings. And one of the things she noticed, like, yeah, when I take the RDLs out, I can push these good mornings harder. Exactly. A good morning will build your squat and your deadlift. And I can't stress that enough. It can build your squat and deadlift if you push it hard and you program it right. Now, if you're coming in playing around, some of you guys are like, well, I'm up to where, you know, I can do 200 pounds for 10 on the good morning. Well, that's cute. But if you're a grown man, that's not what I mean by pushing the good morning. You know, 200, why don't you get a three plates for 10? That'd be a lot better. Because she's up in the hundreds. But yeah, good mornings in reverse hypers. Can go a real long way. A real long way with good programming to building these things up. And she'll continue to hit, hit big lifts. We're trimming the volume down because she can only recover from so much. But just because we slightly reduce total volume doesn't mean that we stop making gains. Right? Doesn't mean we stop making gains. She'll continue to make progress and continue to hit PRs. 
All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.